So hello there and welcome back to the channel and to this, uh, <laughs> I don't know what this is, a reminiscing, reviewing, um, a nostalgic uh, um, views, uh, retro reviews anyway. I have a bunch of weird tech stuff and I'm showing them to you. And this is actually the last point and shoot Lumix camera that I bought with the intent of using it as a daily driver, if you will. It is the Panasonic Lumix TZ22. And I got this around in 2016, I believe. Uh, but by then I was also fairly... Um, I was also fairly sure that these were not well, they weren't relevant in terms of tech anymore and a mobile phone could outperform them easily. Still, I was sort of taken back by this beautiful design, this whole metal construction, the GPS, the nice coloring. I mean, look at this uh, anodized steel or stainless steel. It's almost gunmetal gray with a bluish hint, a bluish hue to it. You can see it better here because this this rim around the di the lens diaphragm just well it just looks boss and <laughs> I don't know how to it's a baller I don't know how to explain it better. In terms of design, they had have changed quite a bit from the previous generations of Lumix point and shoot cameras. While well, this arc circle. Um, protruded and um, meant to uh, emulate that retro camera film look. You know, you could consider this was a design where you could keep your film. This was the TZ7, uh, but the TZ22 went in a different way on the front. It had this curvature around the this double-shaped arc. I don't know what that is. So in terms of design, it was quite fetching. Yet, uh, in terms of construction, actually, to be fair with you, to be honest with you, I got this. So I sort of, I don't know, I didn't dream, but I, I ogled it a lot before purchasing it. You must understand by 2016, I was buying these things solely for the hobby of, for the I don't know, for the fun of it. it. It wasn't a technical reason to get this camera. I didn't have any justification to do so, only to purchase it for my own personal pleasure. And I, I thought about it a lot. I liked the construction from the photos, the fit and finish. I thought it was great, but now looking at it and comparing it to the TZ7, I don't know, this, have a listen. This feels almost a bit more solid. This one, I don't know, maybe it's just my it's just my impression, but I think it's it's a, a lighter uh, metal here. It's not as well built anymore. And by this time, traveler zoom and uh, accessible point and shoot camera cameras were on the downslide. They weren't a favorite to consumers anymore. So I just got it for fun. I thought it was going to be a decent performer, but I was wrong. You can get good pictures out of this anymore. I think it was, I believe it was launched in 2012. But by that time, yeah, so point and shoot the Lumix Travel, Traveler Zoom or TZ lineup was beginning to show its age and its flaws. It did offer a GPS antenna so you could pair up, I don't know, you could identify the location where you took your photos and stuff like that. So yeah, there was that, but still in terms of design, overall construction and performance, it was sort of lacking 
even by the time of the launch, not to mention four to five years um, on when it was completely irrelevant in, as a digital camera. I got some nice pictures with it. I will sample them um, here. Yet I don't really think they're that great and they're actually um, a happy coincidence or an occurrence if you will. Most of them are just basically crap so all the images that it took were not that great. 90% of them. It did offer a very impressive zoom level at 16 times zoom and that is optical zoom but in all, all fairness it didn't live up to the hype. So it has 14 megapixel, still a 3 inch uh, LCD display but this time around at least let me just show you it was a touch screen as you can see so yeah you get touch screen but these improvements were incremental and as I've said by the time of the launch they were sort of maybe not obsolete but lagging behind um, with the competition mainly made by mobile phones come on you don't make me look bad on camera I don't know why this touch screen doesn't want to work what you did get however was a lot of extra setup options compared to the TZ7 not to mention my previous ZX1 which I showed you in a previous episode and one uh, one um, very important setup was well manual exposure of course and also aperture shutter priority and aperture priority so this helped you get a bit more interesting photos please don't ask me to explain to you what this is because I sort of understand the mechanics behind the, this mode. I understand the theory, the logic of it, but I'm not profession, proficient in explaining this to you. So please look up, the, look up on the internet, on Google, what aperture priority really is. And thanks a lot for, for uh, excusing my lame attempts at making a review. I promise to get better at this every day. Okay, getting back to the camera, what I wanted to show you is maybe take a macro picture and show you how I can, well, take a close-up photo and keep the background blurred, sort of like a bokeh effect. So yeah, that result is pretty good I guess. I'll put some samples here for you to see. I was sort of disappointed because I got this back in 2016 as I've said. I thought of it as a smartphone killer. I could bounce around. I could display this as a an able smartphone alternative in terms of camera performance but it simply was not that. Uh, f3.3 to 5.9 so not that great in low light conditions um, I guess it had some performance in it back in the day but it was already sort of on its way out in terms of uh, what the TZ family had to offer and also it uh, well it, it was quite expensive really so nobody really bought it and again the quality feel wasn't up to par 
all compared to its predecessor and to what the public expected. So by 2006, by 2012, when this was out, people were sort of migrating towards micro four thirds or mirrorless cameras in general. It wasn't that you didn't have the money to buy a DSLR, but you wanted something more compact, more easy to use, more user friendly, but still a professional grade in terms of uh, photo capabilities. Enter the micro four thirds or the mirrorless camera uh, universe. So these were mainly forgotten. They're great pieces of tech and of course you by now know that I'm a tech hoarder so I'll keep these things around for some time now. I'm not fooling myself, I know they're not particularly valuable. You could pick one of these up for about, I don't know, 50 euros tops in great pristine condition. By the way, let me show you this one came in its original packaging and while well, the box contains some stuff, there's the uh, obligatory charger. I don't have the cable right now, but I do own it. Back then, companies, tech companies still offered chargers for their new gadgets. Something we should keep in mind. The, well, the TV cable, connection cable, some manuals, here they are, Panasonic manuals, a CD with the ROM on it, I don't know what this is, um, no, I don't know what that is, anyway, that's all she wrote, this is what the camera came with. So I got it cheap, uh, I paid around uh, 40 euros on it in 2016. It was in pristine condition, it still is. So I suspect somebody bought it, then sold it because it didn't offer much uh, potential. Uh, again, one or two buyers sort of um, fooled around with the idea this was a potent camera but quickly realized that's not the case and the price the price dropped quite significantly so this was I believe 400 euros when you and I got it for 10% of that price in a near mint pristine actually mint pristine condition like new basically so yeah, there's that. So I just enjoy the feel of it. I like the all metal body construction. I like this, this um, interesting, uh, I don't know, bluish pinkish hue to this uh, uh, lens cover. So yeah, it's an interesting device and it pairs great with my other Lumix cameras. Here they are. So I have four of them right now. Uh, this one will be used as spare parts camera for this one. Um, anyway, I'll make one good camera out of these two. If you're interested, just check out my previous episode on the TZ7. This one I'll keep around for a lot longer because, again, it's cheap and it was cheap. Uh, it's not very, very valuable now and it's in pristine condition as well. So these two are worth keeping. The other two, I don't know, I might be um, reusing some of the parts and make, uh, maybe make a project out of them. So uh, interesting, uh, interesting idea for a project with these cameras, get them cheap and convert them to um, monochrome or uh, ultra or infrared cameras to take shots in the dark. I think you could 
experiment quite a lot with these because they're not valuable so you can tear them up and well practice your mechanical prowess if you will again just a quick reminder i will uh, be uh, giving away some of the stuff that i just uh, uh, covered in this um in this series although i'm a tech hoarder i realize it's not a very um healthy <laughs> a habit to have so these things are not valuable might as well some other um some other uh, aspiring youtuber or uh, one of my viewers can enjoy them for a while and maybe experiment with them and pass them along um, when the time is right so again the plan is to get 1000 subscribers and as soon as I do that, I will make a wholesale, uh, I will make a package with all the things that I wish to give away and I'll make them sort of a, a lottery uh, in a tongue in cheek manner. They're not very, these devices are not very expensive, but they're worth looking into. So please hold me to my word and watch my videos, click a subscribe and then We'll see how we can do a nice um, sweepstakes. No strings attached. I will also take care of shipping costs because I, I understand these are global uh, shipments. So I'll send them off anywhere they need to go, free of charge, of course. So the only condition is that I reach 1000 subscribers. So you hold me to it. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.